Hello and welcome to this webinar for AQA's Power and Conflict Poetry and we're looking at War Photographer by Carol Ann Duffy. We're looking at form and structure, poetic language and devices and the context. So it's important for Duffy uh, to really draw our attention to the lack of compassion and the lack of interest that Westerners, the Western world have regarding wars around the globe. And this is epitomized or symbolized through the character of the war photographer. Now, the poem is written in third person, but it's the photographer's perspective. So it's third person limited. And we have quite a cold and distant tone. He has to do his job. We can see that this photographer is someone who works in isolation, who's methodical and precise. And that methodical and precise approach is reflected in the fact that each of the four stanzas is a sestet. That means there are six lines long. These are very ordered, like his spools of suffering set out in ordered rows. However, despite the very regular and rigid form, there are short lines, staccato, which is really snappy lines like Belfast, Beirut, Phnom Penh. And that irregularity with the regularity creates a very disturbing contrast to show that he's trying to have order, but really there's chaos in terms of his working world and his feelings. The poet introduces a flashback of the photographer watching a dying man. And this analeptic episode, the flashback he remembers, is introduced by something is happening. It briefly connects us from the dark room to the horror and the trauma of war. The security of England is emphasized through the use of caesura. We have this line, rural England, home again to ordinary pain. And that phrase, rural England, is encapsulated by full stops. It's as if England is wrapped in safety and comfort, where the rest of the world is in pain. And the end of the poem once again reinforces a sense of distance. The photographer's on a plane, and it's just creating this sense of circularity. He has to do his job at the beginning and he earns a living and they do not care. Now, let's think about some of the language devices and imagery that Duffy uses. Very notable at the beginning is the religious imagery, a priest preparing to intone. So this imagery, this simile, really is quite sinister and supernatural because it's this idea of a funeral that's being and enacted and that the kind of the dead and the deceased and their their spirits are still around the red is a really important color symbol that is emphasizing the trauma and the suffering and bloodshed that he as a photographer witnesses and then the plosive alliterations are quite harsh again reminding readers that that war across the continents is harsh and widespread as well as religious imagery, we have a reference to the Bible. All flesh is grass. And this reminds us that human existence is fragile and frail. And we have the hyperbole of the nightmare heat and then the safety of pre-lunch beers. The hyperbole of the agonies and then the safety of the simple weather. That's really showing the comfort of the West and the dangers of foreign war zones. We have metaphors and modal verbs and numeral lexis that show that despite the suffering and the pain that he's witnessed, no one really cares. And he watches impassively because the rest of the nation lack interest. They don't care. So we need to understand that this poem was written in 1985. Really, it's really helping us to consider horrific warfare war zones and how they are represented in the media despite taking a hundred agonies in black and white only five or six of his photos are included and the the poet really wants to criticize the western public we are cruelly disinterested and she really wants to capture the pain and challenge our apathy and lack of concern. And the reference finally to Phnom Penh is really alluding to perhaps one of the most famous war photographs of all time, the Vietnamese war girl running in front of the soldier. And perhaps this reference shows a glimmer of hope 
because the photograph was the beginning of the end of the Vietnam War. And perhaps she's saying that if we change and allow these photographs to change us, then perhaps this could be the beginning of the end of some of these global conflicts. I hope that's helped you to understand. War photographer, thank you for joining me and see you next time.